everyone, so we already reviewed the 6950 XT. This big card right here, seven centimeters across that one, almost a three inch thickness on this card. It's over three slots for PCIe. So now we're gonna tear it down. This is the Sapphire Nitro Plus Pure. I was looking at the box before starting this video to try and see if there's any fun marketing to make fun of. Unfortunately for us, no. It's very barren, pretty plain, but that's a good thing overall. We're gonna take this apart because it's probably the most interesting aspect of this launch uh, because the performance is kinda, eh, it's a little bit better and it's $1,250. So let's get started with taking it apart. Before that, this video is brought to you by Lian Lee's O11D Evo case. The O11D Evo is a mid-tower that tested well previously with us and is most interesting for attention to fine details and its unique features. One of those is the easy to use invertible layout. The O11D Evo inversion process is the easiest we've ever worked with on a case, allowing it to flip entirely for a unique upside down build or work as a standard layout. The O11D Evo has two chambers for the system and the power supply, support for up to nine storage drives and edge to edge glass for a showcase while still offering excellent airflow through side and bottom intakes. Learn more at the link in the description below. So quick update on the GPU market. If you weren't aware, the 3080s we've seen in stock for about $900 on Newegg, uh, 6800 XTs we've seen in stock as well for close to the same price. That makes this a lot harder to justify just because you get most of the performance for a similar price. We also noticed recently that Best Buy physically in store has some 3080 Ti's in stock. Now, personally, I like shopping at Best Buy because they don't know who I am, so they treat me like everyone else. Total trash. And with no respect at all for just people. That was my most recent experience at Best Buy. Best Buy corporate, feel free to reach out and um, you can go fuck yourself. Okay, so let's take apart the Sapphire Nitro. I've got some issues with Best Buy. I won't lie about it. Uh, the, it's a long story for another time. We're gonna use the GN Teardown Toolkit to take this apart. We have drivers for all kinds of different uh, GPUs, video cards in here so that you can take them apart easily. I wanna do a walk around of the card first though and show everyone what we're working with. So physically, uh, the card has a metal backplate, feels like an aluminum. We'll see once we get it open. It's always good if they actually leverage the backplate for something It's there anyway. You might as well add a couple cents of thermal pads. Doesn't do a ton, but it'll reduce the memory temperature. So we're gonna take this off in a moment. Internally, you can see they've actually done something here that I, I like a lot, which is uh, Sapphire does not, it's sad that this is a, a qualifying, like, like a mark of quality on a card, but it doesn't cover the exhaust with a bunch of plastic, like some of its competitors do on its cars. I don't know if all of Sapphire's cars are like that. I'm sure they're fully capable of screwing things up too, but this one is done pretty well, where you've really only got these two embellishments and a little bit of this blocking exhaust. You can see the fins are oriented in this direction. That means, of course, that as the fan pushes air in that way, it can only exit out the top or out the bottom. Let's see if there are any holes in it. There are some holes down here. You can see those on the side. So some air will come out of there, but for the most part, it's coming out top and bottom. So not obstructing those is a good thing. This card was running at 377 watts stock, and when overclocked or when using the OCV BIOS, and there are three V BIOSes on here, we've marked the stock one. Uh, when running with an overclocked BIOS, it was about 411 watts, and then actually overclocked, it was 500 and seven watts. So this cooler is actually necessary because the card was close to 100 degrees for the junction temperature. Uh, TJ Maxx is about, a, well, it's 110 when it starts hard throttling. For the PCB, you can see it stops here. They are using what NVIDIA has been branding a flow-through design. Additional small features, there is an RGB header right there. So you can see that with the indicator. And there's a three-switch V BIOS over on this side. So this has two, three positions. One of those positions is a software switch and that's where you can uh, configure it in Sapphire's software if you'd like to do something more custom with it. Normally we do fans last, but I'm seeing something that looks promising here. I only see one screw for the fan. I hope this is what I think it is. Perfect, that's awesome. This is a great start. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a $1,300 almost dollar card, so it should have some features like this, but 
These are nice. So these are socketable fan replacements. Sapphire's done these before. XFX did these on the Ghost series a long time ago on the RX 580s. Uh, these take one screw. They have pins, so uh, it's just a pin to pad, or actually it's a, a pin to connector contact. Very easy for a user to service. If you ever have a fan die, it's the most common death in a video card. The most common RMA is a fan, not the board itself. If you have a fan die, then you should be able to just email Sapphire and say, hey, can I please have a fan and just replace it yourself instead of being an RMA hell for a month. So that's a great start from Sapphire. We'll set that aside. The fan is a 12-volt, uh, 0.45 amp fan, and it is made by NTK Limited. If you ever need to replace it, we'll put the model number there so you can search for it on eBay or whatever. Or you just email them. They'll probably send it to you. So let's set this aside for now. <laughs> Not really how the... GN fan coaster is meant to be used, but we'll use it that way. Maybe I can put the GPU on this one later. You can buy these on store.gamersnexus.net. They're for drinks, but I'm going to use them for computer parts today. Pretty cool looking internally so far. Okay, so we're going to start taking this apart now, starting with the screws on the back. These are a Phillips one size. It's the driver I'm using right now. That's a pretty large screw. We have a newer version of these mod mats on the store as well. And uh, they include a dual GPU silhouette on the screw tracking grid, new wiring diagrams, ethernet wiring, everything else to help you out with the projects. There's our three power connectors, two eight pins, one six pin. Okay, so, oh, has this been disassembled? Interesting. This has been disassembled by someone who isn't me. And the only people who've had this before us were probably Sapphire. So, that's interesting. Normally we get a retail product that's been unopened, unmodified, but this for sure has been opened. Um, I can see some scratch marks on the inside of the plastic there, or the metal. All right, anyway. Oh, interesting. The back plate actually wraps around. I haven't seen that in a long time. So two more screws got to come out up here. An odd thermal patch. They've taken what's normally like a, a three mil, maybe a 2.5 or something, turned it into a four mil pad by putting it on its side. This is just a white sort of backing to the LED module. We've got RGB header here. You can, here's the LEDs actually. Those uh, eight uh, SMDs there are all for LEDs. There's a controller. There's the uh, capacitor bank on the back of the card. We're going to have MOSFETs right around here on the front of the card. You can see memory modules, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for 16 gigabytes total. Those are on the other side though. I think next to the no trash symbol, they should also have an eBay logo with a, an X through it as well. No scalping. Okay, I think we're ready to just take this off. This has already been through all testing, including thermal testing, just to be clear. So before I pull the heat sink off, one note here. I would like to see, this is a metal backplate. I would like to see thermal pad contact between the memory and the backplate. Again, it doesn't do a ton, but it's a couple degrees normally. We've seen it like two, three degrees at the sort of the high end. On the back of these modules, just to use the surface area of the backplate, uh, they would have to cut some of this plastic shrouding they have, but that would be the, the main criticism I have right now, which is not really the biggest criticism, so that's not too bad. We have a few screws back here as well. Definitely feel the thermal pads. Okay, pretty easy. So cooling wise, we've got this daisy chain going on for the LEDs. So LEDs are taped to the back of it. You can see this PCB uh, that's getting wired into the card's shroud and then back into the board. I guess it's eventually coming over here, unless that's the fans, maybe. Does that say pump? Oh, that's interesting. I guess they have a water-cooled model as well. I haven't seen it, though. Which, just as a reminder, we're filming this before official launch, so we don't have all the information. That blank header right there says pump. So that's going to be for uh, a liquid-cooled model. I don't know if the Toxic will be liquid-cooled. haven't seen it personally yet. You can see a bunch of fuses up here. 
So these are useful for diagnosing what part has failed, useful for RMAs and things like that. Uh, those, will, those will blow if they get overloaded. So that's what those are. No shunt resistors that can be modded in the same way as NVIDIA's uh, shunt resistors on AMD cards. There's another fuse down here for the PCIe slot, probably. Thermal pads, uh, we've got them on the memory modules. So you can see the eight modules here. Interesting. There's some adhesive on the edges of these ones that is showing. We've only seen this on some cards. You know, normally it's a little cleaner than that. It could be indicative of uh, a hasty change, or it could just be how they made them. It doesn't really mean a whole lot right now with our information, but that is not thermal paste, or sorry, thermal pad grease. Sometimes there's grease there, and that's not what that is. For the VRM, it's split between two sides. You've got some of the VRM over here and some over here. There's a controller in there as well. Let's set that aside. For this, so the heat sink itself is sort of trapped in there. I mean, it can be removed, but you'd take the shroud apart. So you can see this is moving freely, kind of interesting. So they've separated this from the base plate here. Uh, there's a couple of reasons you would do this, but there's actually a thermal pad sitting between this right here. This is the contact plate base, so a cold plate here and the base plate for the GPU's heat sink. You can see that this is making contact to this base plate for the memory by a thermal pad that's right in there. So there's that small thermal pad sticking out there that's in between these two. We've seen this on cards before. Typically, though, it's a liquid cooler contacting a base plate, not the primary cooler. So they've decided not to attach these for, for some reason. It's not, uh, I can think of a few legitimate reasons for that, so that's not a criticism, just a statement of fact. And then over here, you can see there's some marks where uh, we've come into contact with thermal pads as well, and um, that's going to be for part of the VRM. Those pads were actually left on the board. For the design, with heat pipes, you always want as much of the surface area of a heat pipe running through the silicon component as possible. So they've got one, two, three, four that basically go completely through this blocked out area for the 520 millimeter squared uh, piece of silicon. And then you've got one extra heat pipe on either end that's helping out but isn't going through the hottest spot. In terms of size, these heat pipes on the outer, on the outside, diameter are going to be six millimeter heat pipes. So that's a fairly standard size, typically six or eight, sometimes 10. I do find this design really interesting. See those imprints? This is always kind of fun, like forensically figuring it out. Those line up perfectly with these. So that's the L-shaped flat bottom of the fin stack lining up with the inductors. And then that puts this in contact with the MOSFETs. And this is actually I believe not even used as a contact patch. Let's go ahead and free this giant heat sink. I think we have to take apart the rest of the shroud for this. Okay, it's actually pretty interesting. So if we separate these, you'll see the rest of the base plate. So they do actually have some surface area here. They've painted it all white. Attention to detail, that's a plus. Very slight uh, deficit normally with Thermal performance it depends, though, how they've plated it. If they did powder coating, it technically hurts performance a little bit. It's not really relevant. Um, if they did electroplating, it doesn't matter as much. Anyway, you can see they've used some of the surface area here. So good use of space. Um, trying to get some extra performance out of this for that side of the VRM, especially. So that's nice to see. And that gets the heat moving up and towards the fans where they can just use air coin to cool it off. This is the thermal pad that contacts with this fin stack. Fin stack's pretty standard just looking at it. Uh, it's got a slight divot in here, but you know, otherwise just a GPU fin stack. They're running one, two, three, four, five, six heat pipes that are obvious to me right now. And those actually it is it's six. They run most of the way through. I'd say this is the most interesting aspect of the card, honestly. The reason is, so Sapphire has done this before. We've we've done some A B tests in the past with and without these additional heat sinks couple benefits doing it this way, because there's not a completely shared solution for the GPU over here, where they're isolated and they, they contact with each other a little bit, but not much. Because of that, the fans are able to take care of the VRM pretty much entirely on their own with just this fin stack. So you're not sharing a thermal solution with the GPU itself. GPU silicon is going to soak most of what this is capable of, and splitting up the heat generated by the VRM 
and, and well, to some extent the memory is helpful, although they do ultimately share a contact point. Um, a lot of the cooling for the the, the uh, VRM is happening in these, and there's actually another heat pipe in here too. So this is good engineering by Sapphire. I'm I'm actually I like this. Uh, it's just they're dealing with a very hot chip, but kind of like the FTW3 with the 39 Ti, the AIB partner is doing a good job at least on their end. So a heat pipe comes through here. You can see it there. Comes back up, goes down and through the VRM heat sink, and that's how most of that cooling is happening. And the base plate is also contacting the memory. So pretty good solution. So let's move all this aside. I'm going to have to clean off the die anyway, so we might as well reveal the die. So there's the die, no text on it. That's typical for AMD right now. Don't see any interesting info. Not really. Unlike the 3090 Ti, they haven't written the binning on this one. So that is the largest die in consumer AMD right now. 520 millimeters squared is the official measurement. Uh, the longest side is almost 30 millimeters, the 28.5 or so. Okay, so that's it for the teardown of the Nitro. Yeah, whether or not the 6950 XT itself is worth buying in general, again, we'd recommend checking out some of the other GPUs lower down that are finally coming back into stock. But regardless of whether you're buying a 6950 XT, at least the engineering on this card is pretty cool. So we liked that the base plate has separated fin stacks for the VRM for the memory, like that it is uh, slightly attached to the main cold plate for the GPU, but that it's self-reliant for keeping those components cool with just airflow from above. Um, really good small attention to detail and usage of space here by Sapphire to get some additional fins around the base plate as well. They've painted the inside, uh, you know, not too ba bad of a thermal hit normally, but again, good attention to detail. So Sapphire's done its job well, and you can check our review to see how AMD did for its side of the equation. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to grab one of our coasters, like these GPU-themed coasters. They come in packs of four. One of them is a fan. We've got a CPU motherboard combo, and we've got a GN logo alongside this one. Uh, we also have our toolkits and mod match there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.